You could say that minerals are the Lego bricks of rocks. Each brick in this house has its own color and shape, but combined together they form something else entirely. Now, of course, all Lego bricks are made from the same plastic, which is where this analogy falls apart. The earth and stuff, the earth and stuff about the earth and stuff, the earth and stuff about the earth and stuff, the earth and stuff about the earth and other things. Minerals are the building blocks of rocks. There are thousands of unique minerals found on earth, some of which are vital to human health, economics, and the prevention of smelly feet. Let's start by defining what a mineral is. A mineral is a naturally occurring inorganic solid with an ordered crystalline structure and a definite chemical composition. To be a mineral, you must meet these five criteria. So by that definition, man-made synthetic minerals are not true minerals. Glass isn't a mineral, and neither is coal, and neither is any solid that is made by living things. Now, I won't be going into detail on how to identify minerals, but just understand that minerals in hand sample are identified by their appearance and their physical characteristics. The color, shape, hardness, cleavage, streak, density, and luster all contribute to correctly identifying a mineral in hand sample. For more information on how to identify a mineral in hand sample, check out the links in the description below. There are two broad categories of minerals, silicates and non-silicates. Silicates, as you might have figured out by the naming scheme, are the most abundant and most important group of minerals on Earth. Within the silicates group of minerals, there are several subgroups. That said, all silicates share one important characteristic, which is this little guy, the silicon oxygen tetrahedron, often just called the silicate tetrahedron. This five atom arrangement has a charge of minus four and can be bonded independently to cations or bonded to another silicate tetrahedron and a cation. They can also bond into chains, sheets, rings, and even complex 3D networks. How the silicate tetrahedron are bonded together has a profound effect on the physical properties of the mineral. For example, how a mineral cleaves. Cleavage is the tendency of a mineral to break along smooth planes parallel to the weakest bonding angle. The atom arrangement and bond strength impact how a mineral will break if enough force is applied. For example, sheet silicates cleave into sheets. They have a weak bond between each sheet, and you can even peel these little sheets apart by hand. Silicate subgroups are named according to their silicate structure, and single chains are called peroxines. Peroxines have the general chemical formula shown here. The X and Y can be calcium, sodium, iron or magnesium, chromium, aluminum, basically most metals found on the periodic table. Peroxines, remember, are a group of minerals. There are many minerals within that group. Double chains are called amphiboles and have a bit more complex variety of chemical formulas. Amphiboles tend to form prisms, columns, or needles. One such needle-like amphibole, asbestos, is an excellent insulator, but unfortunately, it's also really good at causing lung cancer. Sheet silicates, or the micas, are my favorite group of minerals. They can have complex chemical formulas, but the two best known micas are shown here. Fresh micas are unmistakable in hand sample, and geologists love finding large sheets of this stuff. Cosmetic companies love micas too, because when ground up, the tiny light reflecting sheets are the glitter and many makeup products. For 3D networks, we have a couple of important groups, the feldspars and quartz. The feldspars cleave on two planes 90 degrees out from each other and are a major mineral in the continental crust. Quartz is another important constituent of continental crustal rock, and its hardness and lack of cleavage distinguish it from feldspar. Okay, peeps, somehow I forgot on my walkabout to mention orthosilicates, or silicates with independent tetrahedron. In these minerals, a silicate tetrahedron is bonded to a metal, and this group of silicates includes important minerals like olivine, garnet, and zircon, among many others. All right, back to the walkabout. So that's a brief introduction to silicates. 
Remember, silicates are the most important and most abundant mineral group on Earth, and they all share the silicon oxygen tetrahedron. That said, there are some important groups of non-silicates that we should talk about. We have carbonates, which are used in cement and have lots of construction applications. Halides, which include table salt and other salts important to industrial processes and agriculture. Oxides are an extremely important group of minerals. Steel is made from iron ore and oxide, and that's a pretty important one. Sulfides are also an important source of metal ore, with lead, copper, and zinc being just a few of the important sulfides. Sulfates are a unique group of minerals with a variety of construction, drilling, and medical applications. And finally, we have native elements, which are only minerals if they have formed ordered solid structures, and also have a wide variety of important applications. So I've spent some time now discussing the practical and economic importance of minerals, but as budding geologists, we care about minerals for different reasons. Minerals tell geologists a story. They can tell us where a rock has come from, under what conditions it's formed, where it's been, and even how old it is. I've always said that geologists don't really care about rocks all that much. We care much more about the stories rocks tell. If a rock is a book, then minerals are the pages. With that in mind, let's talk about another way to classify common silicates that's a very useful tool for understanding a rock's story. Silicates can be put into one of two broad groups, the so-called light silicates or dark silicates. Light silicates are non-ferromagnesian, meaning they contain very little iron or magnesium, two of the most abundant metals found inside our planet. Light silicates tend to have aluminum, potassium, and sodium as cations. Light silicates tend to be less dense and lighter in color compared to dark silicates. Dark silicates, or ferromagnesian silicates, contain iron or magnesium, are more dense than light silicates, and are generally darker. Dark silicates tend to have magnesium or iron as their cations. Let's drill down a little more and talk specifically about important silicates. Dark silicates include minerals like olivine, pyroxene, biotite mica, and amphiboles. Olivine and pyroxene are the two minerals that make up most mantle rocks. Light silicates include quartz, muscovite mica, and feldspars. These lighter, in color and in density, minerals make up much of the continental crustal rock on which we live. We can extend this concept a little further, but first, let's introduce some terms we use to describe rocks at a most basic level. There are three types of rocks. Igneous, which are formed by cooling magmas. Sedimentary, which are formed by an aggregate of loose accumulated particles. And finally, metamorphic, which are either igneous or sedimentary rocks that have been modified with pressure and heat without melting. Now, we will discuss each of these rock types in greater detail in the lessons to come, but let's talk about how we can very broadly describe igneous rocks with just one glance. We can describe igneous rocks as either mafic or felsic. A mafic rock is a rock rich in magnesium and iron, or as we've just discussed, rich in dark silicates. A felsic rock is poor and magnesium and iron, and contains more light silicates. Now, they both have silicate. Mafic rocks contain silicate, obviously, but pay attention to the chemistry here. Dark minerals don't contain an abundance of silica. By weight, the silica content is pretty low. Compare this to the silica content in felsic rocks. Felsic rocks contain much more silica by weight than mafic rocks. Mafic rocks are heavy and dark. Felsic rocks are light in both color and density. Felsic rocks generally make up the continental crust on which we live, while mafic rocks make up the oceanic crust and the mantle. Mafic rocks contain olivine, pyroxene, and amphibole generally, and felsic rocks contain feldspars, mica, and quartz generally. Of course, mafic rocks can contain lighter colored minerals, and felsic rocks can contain darker colored minerals, but the overall bulk mineral content is a distinguishing factor here. This is a very broad view of rock classification, and there are exceptions. For example, rocks that don't fit within the felsic or mafic category, or darker rocks which are quite felsic. Sometimes you'll find a rock that isn't light and isn't dark, and you'll need to ID the minerals to make a determination of felsic or mafic. 
And keep in mind that both mafic and felsic rocks can and often do contain non-silicate minerals and numerous other minerals beyond the most common three or four. But by using this initial classification scheme, you can see a light colored rock and know immediately this probably isn't a mantle rock or a piece of oceanic crust. Think of mafic and felsic and the bulk mineral assemblage as the first page or two in the book that is the story about this rock's origin and evolution and what it means about wherever on earth this rock came from. Now normally, if this was a Geology 101 course at a university, we'd have a lab class where we would spend more time identifying these minerals in person. We obviously can't do that here, so check out the links in the description below for helpful information and even links to a mineral ID kit that I found for a reasonable price if you're really keen on nerding out on minerals. Silicates, non-silicates, mafic, felsic, olivine, pyroxene, amphibole, mica, feldspar, quartz. These are things we need to know moving forward. Armed with this information, we'll begin discussing the different rock types starting next week. As always, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, peeps. See you next week.